he was in the military, this like buff guy who I never would expect just turned to me. I was like, oh, I won't really want to introduce you to my wife. Uh, what, what are your pronouns real quick? Hi, everyone. I'm Cami Chaos. And I am Rick Tarosi, and we are Mildly Interesting People. Because of that, we are always searching through our network of wildly interesting people to bring guests to chat with who are far more interesting than either the two of us. These folks might not yet be familiar to you, but to us, they're downright famous. Cami, who is our guest this week? You know, when you started switching over to that little tagline, I was thinking that our guest this week is definitely one of those people who's just kind of famous in our house. You don't know her as well as I do, um, but like celebrity status in my brain. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, They're just one of those people that when you meet them, you are all in. You, there's just, uh, she has this level of enthusiasm for life and for caring for others and for advocating for herself and for others and making sure that uh, people have what they need in this world and it's contagious. And so today I would like to introduce you to my darling friend, Anne McCarthy. Oh, Sammy, make me blush. Hi, honey. Hi. It's so good to talk with you and to talk with Rick more. I feel like I'm always just like popping in and out whenever I see you. And um, it's Hi, lovely Rick. to hold this virtual space together. Yeah. yeah. Hi, Rick. <laughs> so, Rick and you guys both get to talk to me a lot. Do you guys need to say anything to one another? Any questions you want to start with before like we dive in and go down the rabbit mm-hmm. hole? Mm-hmm. Rick, you know, okay, I got a question. I have a yeah, question. Go. We got, here we go. Go, go. Describe yeah. yourself in one word. Uh, <laughs> hmm. That's it. No pressure. It's no, not I even a word. It. It's just. It's just. Uh, hmm. I like that. Okay. I like it might be meh, do. but it's more. Hmm. 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 Yeah. It's, it's more hmm than meh. I, I, I think. Yeah. Rick, any questions for Anne before we start? I, you know, I did my research, you know, as I always do, whether I know people well or not. And I Mm. think for me, one of the, one of the aspects of, of Anne's life I'm most interested in just kind of exploring is the, just the nomad experience like that's not, I moved a lot as a child, but I was always moving from place to place for very long Mm. periods of time. So I'm really, uh, I'm always intrigued by folks who remain on a journey as a nomad. And so that's one of the, one of the things I want to dig into that doesn't have to happen right off the bat, but I would love to get into that at some point. It can. We can, as I was say, I would love to hear about your experience of also popping around like as a kid. I think it's very different when you choose it versus when it's like, Mm -hmm. that's a how did you choose it? How did you become? Because you are, you're one of, you're one of the nomads. You're one of the technical mm-hmm. tech mo- nomads. What are we? Mm-hmm. Digital. Digital, digital nomads. nomads. That's the term mm-hmm. I was looking for. How did you mm-hmm. become a digital nomad? Yeah, it's interesting. I try not to be, there's a quote I love that says like, be careful with what you attach to your identity because that just will mm-hmm. keep your identity small because you want to be able to evolve. And so nomad is something um, my site that I blog on, nomad.blog, is something that I've actually toyed with changing just because I'm like, I don't want to be too attached to the identity. And I think nomading initially started for me. Um, I was living in San Francisco. I did not travel a lot growing up at all. Um, and broke, went through a breakup, was working for Automatic, and we work remotely. And so I was just like, well, I have nowhere to be. I've just moved my life across the country and survived. Um, mm-hmm what if I just keep going and like, where, where do I want to end up? And I noticed that like, depending on the situation I was in, there's like this theory around, you know, there's not bad apples, there's bad barrels. Um, Phillips and Bardo because of <laughs> Stanford prison experiment, which is a huge problem, but huge ethical violation. But I think about that a lot. It's like, there's situations that you are different parts of yourself can come out and for better, or for worse. And so mm-hmm. I started playing with that a little bit and um, was very fortunate to, be able to change locations and then just kind of stuck with it. Like I think some of it was um, kind of cycle. So I'm not someone who 
is so insistent on the nomad identity that I will just leave a place for no reason. Um, a lot of times I'm cool with staying or I like having a home base. Sometimes I like departing and leaving. Um, but I found it's allowed me to be present for births, deaths, and everything in between graduations. Um, mm-hmm. Just to to go see someone's like childhood um, home, to go explore where they went to high school, like to go just do life differently with different people at different times. Um, maybe someone's having a great time and something really exciting is going on. And maybe someone's going through a really tough time. And just to be there and kind of replicate that, like, hey, I'm down the street. <laughs> like, yeah. I'm here for the next two, couple months. Like, let's hang out. Um, I think it's a really rich and interesting way to live and a very privileged one. Um, I think it's, I've talked to some friends who have faced eviction and um, housing insecurity is a huge issue, um, especially in the now, like in Seattle. And that's, um, so, you know, dating someone who's an eviction lawyer. So I, it's also very interesting to think about from that standpoint um, and very horrifying. And so I think that I, the act of choosing it is very different psychologically than, you know, needing to move mm-hmm. all the time. Yeah. So I, I do like to make that distinction of um, it's a choice and one that I am lucky that I can lose. I always say like you can lose time, sleep or money. And I'm very lucky that I can lose any of those and be okay. Yeah. So yeah, it's kind of an evolving thing. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what it's going to look like in like 20 years, but we'll see. Right. How does the nomad, not lifestyle, but how does the nomad experience lead to you and what you call life chats? So anyone who follows mm-hmm. Anne on social media will know that she has lots of life chats with people. Wants you to pick your life chat bench, your life chat scenery, the life chat. Tell me what is a life chat? Yeah, I almost think of it as nomading is physically moving around and a life chat is like emotionally nomading around, like exploring different topics and going really deep and staying there and then moving on. Um, I think they they do interrelate into like an innate sense of curiosity about the world. Um, Mm -hmm. And so I think they're both. Yeah, they feel very connected, actually. I haven't thought of it in that way. But yeah, they feel very connected where I like to explore. I like to be curious. I like to um, bring others with me and do do things with other people. Um, so like my mm-hmm. favorite way to nomad is with others. Like I, I can do it alone. I've done it a lot. <laughs> um, but I love I love going on trips with friends and with loved ones. Um, but yeah, the life chat stuff, it's tough. I... I think I've like been spoiled with amazing conversations and came in or like, I think you're, you're one of those people for me where it's, it's uh, yeah. It's like, I love to survive off of, you know, talking to strangers when I need to, but there are also something about like traveling far and wide to like sit with people and to be in it with them and to sit across from them and to be in their space. It's really magical. And to, to me, that's part of what I think nomading has been. It's like the cream of the cream go and spend two weeks in an area and be with friends and have these like meandering endless conversations where we're not dealing with a phone call. Yeah. Yeah. You lose track of all time and space and you're just there with someone else. And I think being in person is, is really powerful. Like I think it's very like evolutionarily powerful. So yeah, the nomading, I definitely, after COVID, COVID really impacted me because I had a really safe put. And afterwards it switched from just like wanting to go far and wide to wanting to go to my loved ones. So like this past year, my travel was very different mm-hmm. than it had been in the past. I like went and saw shout out to Krebs. Um, a friend of mine knew first year as a professor and I just like wanted to see them teach. <laughs> and so yeah. I sat in a class and was like, just like nerding out and like saw them teach. Like that's literally, I spent like a whole day just doing that. And like the whole next day was like walking with her dog through the park. And like, where do you walk your dog? Like, let's go and walk this same path. <laughs> like, I literally just, she's like, this is all you want to do in New York City? And I was like, yeah. Like, I just want to. I've been to New York. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. Yeah. I have a, speaking of, I've got a great path for, I have a great little nature path for us to go wandering on next time you're in town. So just saying. <laughs> It's super interesting, like something that hadn't dawned on me, but you mentioned phone calls and I was thinking about like, it's super interesting to me that that's one of those situations where something that with lower technology seemed to be something we could do for hours on end, but in modern day, like, oh, you only have so much battery life to have that 
conference, like your headphones are going out or your mm-hmm. phone is going out. And it's kind of changed that dynamic of what a phone call is, as opposed mm-hmm. to like when I was a kid, you would stretch the cord as far as you could to go hide in the closet and like chat for four hours yeah. with your friend about what, yeah, about yeah. whatever. But yeah, that's super interesting. That hadn't dawned on me until you described it that way. Would you I would take my, a- oh, I would take my phone out in the backyard. Same thing, stretch out the really long cord, <laughs> pull it as far as I could, close the sliding glass door oh, so no. that my mm-hmm. parents and my brother couldn't listen to me. And then yep. just like, sit on the steps or just like tiny pace back and forth and talk for hours and hours and hours. And I don't talk on the phone at all anymore. I'm like, I was like what medium you all like to keep in touch with people. Cause that's something that I've started asking people more and more is like, what's your medium? Do you do? Cause like audio messages are really big now. Like I have a bunch of friends who literally send each other podcasts. Like mm-hmm. one, the professor friend, um, like, yeah, they'll send me like a 30 minute long audio recording where it's like them in their bath, just like talking to me about whatever. Like, it's just, like, <laughs> it's very cute and I love it. Like, it's very, very fun. But I'm curious, like, do you all have a favorite medium for chatting with folks? This? I this really, podcast. actually, I think that's part of the, it, it's not part of the reason that's most of the reasons we started the podcast is mm-hmm. it's deeply social and I get to talk to people and I get to pull out this amazing information and we get to share these people that mm-hmm. we've been blessed to have in our lives with other folks. So that is one. I'm a texter. I like texting. Mm-hmm. Um, like I, and I do it in spurts. There are some people that like will text me. I, we have one friend uh, in common, uh, Brooke, mm-hmm. who will text me, mm-hmm. and then I will respond and be like, "I'm not ignoring you. I can't text right now. I just I can't. Yeah. I don't have it in me." And she tells me she loves me and she'll talk to me later. Mm-hmm. And then when I text three weeks later, she's so excited to see me. She's like, "Oh, look, you survived!" <laughs> and we're right back where we left off. And so I really, uh, yeah, it's it's yeah. like. It's the goodness of automated technology mm-hmm. and a pen pal at the same time for me. Pen pal. That's like, I've had to train some friends with texting where I'm like, I want to hear from you, not in a like rushed way, but in a like yeah. respond when you can. Like that is another weird mm-hmm. thing about modern technology where I think we did go through a period, or at least I did, where it was like, I just was on my phone 24 seven, just texting. Yeah. Like, I think I sent like 14,000 text messages in a month when I was like 15, 16. And my dad's like, what are you doing? What are you doing in school? And I think that's, yeah, like going to like writing long text messages and like just responding when you can and not worrying about it, I think is something I hope more people Because I agree with you. I love words. That's my I, favorite. I love non-urgent. I should say non-urgent yeah. texting. Like I, my daughter, every time she texts, mm-hmm. it's, it's urgent. She wants to know something. She wants to mm-hmm. share something. And it's like right now. And for me, I'm like, okay, we have to change the level of immediacy with which mm-hmm. you expect a response um because it's just not how i do it i wasn't i'm has to hike uphill both ways in the snow to go to school (laughs) kind of age we didn't have texting when i was a kid i didn't even have email until i was a full-grown adult uh so what was it like when texting came out was it like a huge relief like i know for me whenever texting limits got unlocked i was like oh this is the best thing ever like i do remember it being like a huge relief to be able to text as much as I wanted. I wasn't a huge texter until the iPhone. So because really? having to hit like what it was just the dial pad and you had to like hit each key a certain number of times to get each letter. Mm-hmm. I was like, Oh my God, my thumb is tired. What is happening? Why am I even doing this? Just send me an email, please. Um, but as soon as texting became prevalent on a mini keypad, and then on, you know, computer connectivity, it mm-hmm. became, it's, it, it is my lifeline for communication mm-hmm. with people. That's really cool. Rick? Uh, so on the communicating with people front, it tends to be usually kind of one-on-one live conversation, be it virtually or or in person, um, that tends to be my most effective way of keeping up and connecting with people. I really do like the written word, but I find that <laughs> in terms of understanding your target market, I am capable of generating a great deal of content very rapidly. <laughs> I realize other people don't have the time or bandwidth to consume that much content. So it's usually the highest fidelity is usually in person in short 
bursts. Like I can't mm. do hours upon hours with people on a regular basis, but like a, a coffee or, or a beer or something along those mm-hmm. lines is pretty um, workable for me. And so I think that's my preferred format. I think I don't even think about texting or being on Slack or being on email. Like that's just, it, it is what it is. It's not even really, it's perfunctory and not really a, a means of connecting. It's just a, a tactical way of, of communicating with folks. And then um, I've never really been a huge texter. Like I will text, but like, I don't get into long text conversations. It's more mm-hmm. like, and most of it is because I'm highly keyboard driven like i had to take typing school in junior high i'm going to continue to use that for the rest of my life (laughs) and and mavis beacon gave me all the skills i needed to type as much as i want so i feel that like my thumbs don't move as fast as my brain and so i need Mm -hmm. 10 fingers at my disposal to to communicate that way via text so um yeah, I think I do text, but I tend to do it from my desktop in iMessage or WhatsApp or Slack or whatever. Nice. Yeah, I find that amazing one. I have one friend who didn't know you could connect. She's a teacher and she didn't know you could connect your phone, like your iPhone to your computer. And I just she writes she writes really long text messages, like really wonderful, thought out, beautiful, like like it is like eighteen hundred letters, like on like, you know, the frontier kind of style texting. It's incredible. <laughs> but she does it all by hand. And so the other day I was like, hey, sorry, I read this on my computer and then like forgot to respond or something like that. And then like wrote this long thing because it was kind of like she was asking for advice and I kind of missed the window. And she was like, wait, what do you mean you texted from your computer? And I was like, you can write it. <laughs> like it gets to that arrow, like that thing in uh-huh. where it's like to read more, you have to click on this freaking arrow and see the whole thing. Like it was like, it blew my mind. Like it made it, it was so interesting. It's such a technological thing, but it was like, wow. It felt like she like hand wrote me the letter because it was like, she yeah. typed it with her tiny little thumbs for probably mm-hmm. like an hour. Like, you know, like, I was like, yeah. meanwhile, I'm over here like blaze writing with my computer. Like, yeah, it was really like a weird, meaningful moment where I was like, for years she's been doing this and I had no idea that she just didn't know. That That's it connected so to. sweet. Isn't that the sweetest? Like I was like, it oh, so like, sweet. Love that. Well, and that's my that's my new Instagram rabbit hole is the handwrite everything, but take a picture of it and post it to Instagram like that oh. kind of thing. I find super interesting as of late. Rick has amazing it? handwriting, so I think you should be doing personally more of that rather than just like hmm. understanding, consuming and sharing, it. and I should be it. producing it. Have, yeah, the world is you know the world is not better for you not sharing your handwriting. What sort of stuff would you write if you did handwriting stuff? Oh, I would just write snarky, snarky startup <laughs> business stuff. I wouldn't okay, do anything, thanks. anything of any merit. Why would <laughs> I waste my time with that? No poetry. Yeah, no, probably not. <laughs> he's not a he's not a poet. Mm-hmm. He doesn't he he accepts the poetry as a written art form. Uh, I've studied poetry. Yeah, well, quite a bit. Um, I'm the but poet I'm prose. I'm the yeah. prose guy. Yeah. Mm. all right i want to take a i want to take a huge detour there's something i really want to talk to you about because i know it's mm-hmm. something that you're comfortable talking about and that a lot of people don't have someone that they can listen to or will listen to or will hear so i want to talk about pronouns Anne. let's do it you know that i have a lot of uh fam- familial mm-hmm. experience around pronouns and the use of pronouns and the changing of pronouns and and uh, you have pronouns that are not what everyone would expect, right? You don't, you don't have she, her mm-hmm. pronouns. You don't have they, them pronouns. You have she, they program, pronouns. So share with people okay. because I know you and I sat next to one another in a DEI workshop once. Mm-hmm. And one, I asked the, the instructor to talk more about two things, one pronouns and two fluidity. Um, Mm -hmm. and, and I don't know if you remember her answer, but her answer was to ask me to tell her because she didn't know. Yeah. I came up with that. And I was like, which is also Um, very real and vulnerable, but it also was like, man, it was, I mean, I appreciate, I appreciate it, but like she was employed to teach us. 
<laughs> and um, so talk to me a about a about the a about your pronouns, like you specifically and your pronouns, and how you use yeah. the two different pronouns and. Also, so, like you're significantly younger than we are. And so this mm-hmm. kind of is just part of your generation growing up um, and being able to select the way that you present mm-hmm. and the way that you are viewed and held in this world. And I don't think it's something that either Rick or I ever imagined as, as kids. Um, so like, yeah. let's just go down that path. I love this. This is so good. I also, Rick, I feel like one of the episodes I listened to recently, you're like, we have long meandering questions that people get lost. And I was like, oh, please do the, I love that. I'm like, Tammy, I'm like hanging on everyone. I'm like, let's go, let's go. Because um, it is so complex and it is so fluid and it is so like, um, people do get up in arms about it. Like um, my parents included, like I, I had my, my mom was having a really hard time with it at one point and they don't use, they know about everything. Like I identify as being a gender. So like, I just don't relate to gender, like in that way. Like if I'm looking at the spectrum, I just feel like I'm, somewhere around like it's ever made sense to me um and growing up i was like you know they were possibly a tomboy and all that sort of stuff and i sometimes would get misgendered like i remember going um to my brother and i were going to taurus in school or something like that and they were like oh your son's da 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 my mom was like horrified and i remember it like didn't even save me either way like it wasn't like yes and i also wasn't like oh my god what did you just say um like it was just kind of like a neutral thing like i remember being like why are you upset about this like this is just someone made a mistake um and so yeah i think it's interesting my pronouns i feel like were something that i started playing with in a way of like kind of paying attention to what felt good um before i understood a lot of the stuff around gender like it was one of those things where i heard a gender and i was like yeah that makes sense and then i was just like she hers fine and then at a certain point i started seeing like they them and I was like hmm, they them all the time doesn't feel great like I don't love that like I think that that is just like uh for me I, I was like I I don't want to go all the way there that felt like a like being a gender that felt like a big but then when I saw someone I can't remember who the first it probably was at a lesbian suit tech um conference which is a wonderful um, in San Francisco and there's one in New York City and what have you and um I think someone there used she they and I was like, wait, you can do that? Like <laughs> it's like what? And it's things to just like use it interchangeably, but a lot of times one of the things I notice now is like whatever is used first, it's almost like free ring. Like some people say like use that more frequently. So it's a frequency thing. Um so for me it's not. For me it's like equal weighting. So it can change. Like for I think for some folks it is like if you'll see they she and it's basically saying mm-hmm. like use they more often but you can also use she and that's fine um for me she they is just like i wish i could say um i didn't do it here it's a slash but slash but i probably should use that like straight line or something that's mm-hmm. just like use either of them um and what's neat is actually i've noticed the last year in particular i have noticed people whether it's like write up and like a something with work or someone paying me at work that more people are using the they them and one of the things that's also interesting is like the second you add like a they in i notice people which can be did a great job like i like it interspersed it doesn't need to be 50 50 it's like i could hang mm-hmm. out with you can use they them the whole time i can hang out with you here the whole time um some people it's different like it is a very personal thing um but the interspersed is fun like whenever i'm writing a bio for myself i intersperse it intentionally because i want it to be like um I want someone to feel comfortable like tumbling through the different options and have it feel because that's how it feels to me. Like it's like uh I don't like he him. Like I get he him <laughs> a fair amount. Um, but that's just like not I know some people who are like all pronouns work and that is definitely not where I'm not when it comes to being a gender. Um, but I also don't mind it. Like it doesn't bother me if that happens. Um but yeah, I think I think pronouns are like a fascinating um, exploratory thing. I also know some folks who I do think would be interesting, but I don't love my name, but where they have no pronouns and just use their name. Um, Mm. Esther Perel actually had a really interesting podcast episode where it was someone who just used, um, I can't even say the pronoun, like just used the name. um, And then Esther Perel just messed it up the entire time and like openly talked about it. Like it was a really beautiful, wonderful, like um, podcast episode. I'm sure it was really hard for the person. 
Um, but yeah, it's just like the person's name. Um, and I think that would be interesting if I was like more tied to my name. But yeah. I think Anne mm-hmm. is just like a, I'm like, yeah, Anne's Anne. <laughs> I don't yeah. know. I, I answer to it. that. I answer to it. Yeah. I like yeah. my middle name. I've thought about going by my middle name, um, which is Guyan, G U I O N. Because it's just weird and it feels a gender. It feels like it doesn't have a mm-hmm. connotation. Um, I think there'd be a ton of pronunciation issues, but I, I've thought about that. Like if I, if I switch jobs or if I reach a certain point, I think that would actually feel good, which ironically is my mother's father's name. When I told my mom about it, um, <laughs> she was like, Oh, you should, that's, that'd be awesome. You should totally do it. And then I was like, you do know that like your friends, like they're, I have no problem saying that they're quite conservative. Like I was like, that would probably confuse your friends. Like I was just like, yeah, just a heads up. And that explicitly, I was like, because it's you know, it's her family name. I was like, I would use it as related to gender, and I want you to feel comfortable. Yeah, I haven't revisited that, but that is a conversation that I would probably have. Um, let you do it. Does that kind of dive in a little bit? The pronoun world is a total it's, interesting sure. thing. It's yeah. an ocean, yeah. and we just got a glass of water out of it. Um, well. And and the the thing that <clears throat> dawns on me, um, and I've just never actively considered it like this before, is the I, especially as you're saying, well, th- this person only used the proper na- a noun as their mm-hmm. descriptor, and I'm like, well, that makes sense because the pronoun is really just obfuscating your identity altogether, right? Yeah. Like even if you get to choose the pronoun you want to choose, mm-hmm. it's still not you. It's shorthand for your yeah. particular gender or disposition, um, which kind of takes me back to our phone call conversation, which is like when I was a kid, I always used to answer the phone whenever it rang, didn't matter what it was, but I knew I had to do that. And now it's like, no, the phone is there for my convenience. Mm-hmm. It can ring as much yeah. as it wants. I will use it when I need to use it, or I will answer it when I choose to answer it. And that the, the thread I'm getting back to is that's what pronouns are really doing is saying for <laughs> the other party. It's frozen. Do, 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 do. I, see your technology. I can hear you. like this it's still frozen now both of you froze this is like a that's what i like to do whenever someone freezes i think it was like that's that's like the beat's about to drop he's got the headphones and the microphone you never know it might happen the the beat might drop (laughs) interesting interesting i don't actually know what to do in this circumstance so we'll just wait for him to come back because he's producer hello producer yeah He's the one that like records, has all the. We go rogue, and then he has to listen to this later. Yeah, I bet it'll still record. Now, what do we I want think to it talk still about? Records us, like I think yeah, it, it will still record us. We're still recording, right? and this will upload to him. And he might still think he's talking. It's possible because it records locally on his, and then oh, uploads right. it. So yeah, we can talk That's about anything we want to. I know. I I do think that whole like. I mean, now I'm like, do I get into, I mean, like playing with like how it's evolved, I think is very interesting. Like, I, mm-hmm. I wonder what gender and pronouns will be like 20 years from now. I wonder that Whether too. That, you know, like in a good way, it's like, I wonder how it will evolve more, like how I will, I think I, I do one thing that I do like to say around pronouns, because I do think it really upsets people and it's like, I'm not trying to harm you. And it's like, yeah, I know, I know. Just like also make the effort to get it right. Like you're not going to get it right 100% of the time, but like it's a way to show up for someone. It's a way to see someone and delight someone. And I it think is. with pronouns, that gets missed a lot. Because it's like, well, you're confusing me. Like that's why you're a lot from relatives. And I'm like, I'm asking you to show up for me. It's not, I'm not asking, like, you know, like it's, it's a sign of love to like, uh, I, I will say one thing I personally am trying to get better at is asking people. So even if I gather with a group of friends, like I ran like a quarantine, zoom call thing during covid um and like every four or five months um because i knew a couple on the call were like really exploring pronouns and and stuff that i would just ask I'd be like hey can we do a little pronoun check and getting comfortable asking like early on in a conversation especially when meeting someone's first time like i'll never forget um going to like a thanksgiving party and this like 
he was in the military, this like buff guy who I never would expect just turned to me. I was like, oh, I won't really want to introduce you to my wife. Uh, what, what are your pronouns with it? It's just like so casual, so heartwarming. So like, I was like, so taken aback that I was like, oh my God. Um, I like totally stumbled. On yeah. I, was just, like, I was not used to being asked by that type of person. And that like really yeah. shows me how far things are coming and, and how it just is like a nice thing to ask people. And like, I think the problem is a lot of times you know, I've read from some folks and like where, where it's like, oh, it's really upsetting to be asked all the time because it tells me I don't think this. So I think normalizing asking people who are like in no way affiliated with that, I think is also really important because you never know, first of all. And second of all, like, I think it is exhausting for someone who doesn't pass um, or who isn't binary. It's totally- microaggression you know? it's not even a mic huh? it's a maxi aggression i mean mm-hmm. for some folks it really is mm-hmm. and especially when this rise in asking pronouns like the like predominant people who got asked were people who like quote unquote didn't fit and it yeah. was like oh my god i'm exhausted like <laughs> i think that's part of why the pins popped up like it just became this like oh my god i don't know for sure about that but i wouldn't be surprised if some people have started carrying around those pins more frequently because it is just like I'm tired of being asked, um, which we, makes me really sad. Like, it's like, yeah. trying to show up, but like, we started the, uh, providing them at conferences and using mm-hmm. them at conferences and using the name on name badges at conferences, uh, just for the, the reason of normalization, just completely yeah. because people shouldn't have to just assume that people are not going to misgender them. It's just, that's a great normalizing of it. Like a standardized, everyone has this. Um, yeah. yeah like, it's just like, let's, set it so people don't have to like figure out themselves so to speak or like have to advocate for themselves over and over again um yeah that's interesting i like that i i know a lot of a lot uh, i shouldn't give weight or balance or information to it i know that there are many folks who feel insulted when they ha- are asked for their pronouns because mm-hmm. they just want it to be like the old days why do you have to ask clearly i'm a Blank. Mm-hmm. Clearly, I'm a blank. No, clearly, no. That's not how this works. Clearly, you are. Please share. Um, yeah, please share. Yeah. And it's the same when someone says, "I'm a cis woman." Oh my god! Mm-hmm. Why would you say I'm a cis woman? That's so offensive. I, why do you need to specify that? It, it's just a prefix. It's just a prefix. Yeah. It's just a yeah. prefix. Uh, it, no mm-hmm. one's trying to hurt you with their pronouns or the prefixes. We're just yeah. trying to communicate clearly. Language has evolved, and so has our understanding of gender and sexuality and mm-hmm. and humanity I let, think it's such the, a let the conversation yeah. evolve yeah just imagine uh, it as like musical to you it's like oh it's like a relief watching you and you get it like i think that that's like and like i think the other thing is when people talk about pronouns it's like when you get it wrong like don't make a big scene just like fix it be like oh you're right i'm so sorry say it right yeah. and then move forward because i think that's the other thing that i've seen happen and i've done it personally i think it's one thing that's really interesting in in part of the journey of like evolving and growing is like the ways in which um i could have done better in the past and like learning from that too um and i think that's something where i try to be very like understanding about like we're all evolving i hope so yeah i I try to go with sincerely apologize and do better Uh, You know, you can't just apologize again and again and again. If you keep making the mistake, it's you're making the mistake. It's hurtful. Um, But apologize when it happens and do better in the future. Mm -hmm. I'm going to share a story. When you first started using she, they, and I don't know if Mm -hmm. you remember this conversation or not, um, but it was in it was in a text based format where you and I communicate. And I remember asking you if you, what, which would you prefer? I use she, they, and you were like, oh, it doesn't matter whichever one you feel like. Mm-hmm. And I wanted to throttle you. And I was like, no, <laughs> it's not about it's my wrong. identity. It's about your identity. What do you want me to use? Uh, because I've had the conversation with a few folks in the past where they're like, oh, mm-hmm. whatever. I know you love me. I'm like, ah, no, no, no. tell me. <laughs> Empower yourself. Tell mm-hmm. me what to say. Um, so, I just want to throw that out there too. Like when people yeah. ask for your pronouns, it's because they care. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, so, yeah. Also, like I do have a friend who loves to like so radical. Like basically any pronoun. Like right now, I'll say she her. Like she will not give pronouns because she wants to see how other people perceive her. So she is very androgynous. So it is mm-hmm. one of those things where, like, um, depending upon it, you know, if they're in Utah 
probably will get like he him a lot and then if like but if in new york city or like in la like it's more of a they them like it's just super and for for her it's like very much like a thought experiment like it's like i think we're both pretty agender and feel similar about gender but like i don't if someone kept calling me the way i describe it, if someone kept calling me he him eventually i'd be like yo <laughs> but I feel yeah. like it's I, it's fine i don't mean any harm but, but like i don't like that and that's not like good to me like it's fine if you do it a couple times but like that's not how i identify and like they them doesn't all you know it's like none of it feels great but like this is what feels good to me yeah. and that for my friend just thinks it's like hilarious like a fun dog experiment like way more gender fluid in that way and way more like i guess gender expansive is probably the better word like enjoys playing with that dynamic and how like they're perceived and all this sort of stuff it's very interesting um and like luckily like they haven't had um they've had some like bad encounters right like yeah. someone thinks that they're talking to like a guy and then all of a sudden it's like so there is like some danger to it too um which is sad yeah. to say yeah it's a world we live in rick you're back Welcome i am back. back sorry who are you back sorry I've been. Yeah. <laughs> yeah technology it is what it is. Before we started this episode, one of my sincere, not concerns, but awarenesses was mm -hmm. what happens if Anne starts asking questions? <laughs> um, because Anne yeah. asks incredibly sincere, heartfelt, and deep, deep questions. We all know how much I love answering questions. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we're we're almost at the mark where we need to move on to our mildly interesting question segment. We haven't gotten to many of the things I wanted to talk to Anne about, but Anne, you've done such a good job not going off the rails and delving into oh, no. our lives. I present to you another moment where you can ask Rick a question if you'd like to. Oh, look at that. Technical difficulties yet again. <laughs> like a, a roster of questions that like sit in my brain rent free as the kids say mm -hmm. um, ask you, okay you this is a very complicated question we're gonna make it smaller so normally i ask if you have seven lives like if you were what, mm -hmm. what would those seven lives be and like mm -hmm. if you, you could play with every aspect like where you grew up gender sexuality profession like whatever but let's say you have like one other life so we'll narrow it down like what's like another you have a whole other life to live how would it and like imagine you know this like you're living this life now and you're like i can live a whole other life and you get to like mm -hmm. choose reincarnation style where does your brain go and there's no like right or wrong but i think it just says a lot of you know it's a good way to get to know someone i i think that's a fascinating question i think the response is probably more fascinating from someone who is younger like i think the more i think the more mature and older i've gotten like the more oh. i've been like oh no that was my life that was a th that was the decision that you made at that point in time and and it's it may not be the ideal of what you imagined but it's brought you to this place in life that gives you these opportunities or has these challenges or whatever. Um, so I don't know that I have a terribly well thought out or creative answer. All I can think of I is this just, judgment you're placing on the answer too. This is like very yeah, it's not, interesting in and of it, itself. It's not, not going to be interesting at all, but like I, I've always been curious about, well, I guess there are two lives I've been curious about. They may be, a single life or not one mm -hmm. what if i had remained in more like what if i remained in southern idaho instead mm -hmm. of leaving it like if i if i if i experienced my adulthood in southern idaho would i now be a you know republican mm -hmm. gun toting conservative or would mm. i have continued along this more um path of thinking and being more accepting and and mm. liberal in my thought and then the other one which um you know is is quint as as an athlete 
I will not oh, classify. Yeah. I will not classify you as a dumb jock like I am, but there's always <laughs> that well, like yeah. if you just if you yeah. just put in a few more hours oh. of practice yeah. every day, like what what was that life? Like what would that have been um if you if I don't, I don't care. Like just a sport. <laughs> like I did mm. so many sports. Like it could have been, could you have meddled at the Olympics in wrestling? Mm. Could you have, you know, continued, like I was in Olympic development for soccer. Like if I just spent oh, yeah. more time focusing on that, could I have been mm. playing with Tony Miola and, and <laughs> John Harks in the, mm -hmm. in the world cup, uh, you know, or, you know, with, like lacrosse, like, could I mm. be playing pro lacrosse at something? Like, it's just, it's one of those things where it's like, I always um, took pride in the fact that I excelled at the level I was at. Like, always, always gunning for the MVP, always on the all star team, all those kind of things. But if I, if I hadn't been satisfied with that and I continued to push it, like the best athletes do, mm -hmm. like what, what would that life have been? That would be an interesting. That would be it. Both of them are very interesting, like very also polar opposites in some ways. Yeah. I like, I like the expiration of that, of both of those. Yeah. I sometimes wonder about that. If I had never left Florida, like where I grew up in Florida, like I've mm -hmm. always, like, I think that's a great one. I've never thought about that. It's like, cause I do, I sometimes will ask this question and I've never, yeah. That's very interesting. The athlete one is so real. I just was playing pickup soccer yesterday. I was talking to some guys that I play with. And I was like, did you ever want to go pro? And they were all like, oh, yeah. Like, it was everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would have loved that. Like, And I remember when the NWSL started, the National Women's Soccer League, I had a friend who was just like, she's incredible. She's like one of the best athletes I've ever played with. And um, she was like Florida Gatorade Player of the Year, like just really mm -hmm. wild athlete. and. I was like trying to nudge her to join the NWSL and like the league folded, like the, the last, you know, leagues would fold every two years, basically. It was like not a really viable yeah. pathway. So it's the longest last league they've ever had. And um, yeah, there, I went and play, I went not play. I went and watched a game last, uh, this past weekend. And one of the people that I marked to go, had to play against for us to go to state finals was on the damn pitch. And I was like, man, like I had a moment where I was like, I marked you and you were a forward then. Now you're a defender. This would always happen. Like, but it, I, like, there's no way. Like I was not good enough. And I knew that. But there also is like what if I had just practiced and everything. Yeah, you know, like that is really right. good. I like that. Yeah. 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 Like, what part of your personality would have changed and more? Like I do think yeah. that is where like the situation does impact us so much. Like there's a world in which I never came out 100%. Right. Like, I totally think that's right. a lifetime, you know? Yep. Yeah. 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 Yeah, exactly. Thank you, Cammy, for <laughs> indulging me. This is everything I'd hoped for. It was beautiful. It was so delightful. You can ask me questions literally anytime, but how often do you get to ask Rick questions? But, you know, maybe we'll get him to come hang out with us for a bit next time mm -hmm. you're in town. Uh, I'm going to move along. I'm going to go ahead. Everyone, we've been trying to get Anne on the show since, you know, last season, season <laughs> one. Uh, and one time they had to cancel one time we had to cancel back and forth. Uh, I think it probably goes without saying that we would love to have you back. There's so much to talk with you about. <laughs> uh, there's just so much to talk with you about both on air and off. Uh, and so before we get into the mildly interesting question round, I just want to say, Anne, we'd love to have you back and thank you so much for joining us. And I love you. I love you too. And thank you so much for having me and for being patient with like, I love the camps. I love people you can cancel with and know that you'll connect again. That is like the best feeling. And I felt like that with this and it, it just makes it so much easier to be present, you know? Yeah, absolutely. 100%. All right. Anne McCarthy and Guyan McCarthy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm testing <laughs> out Guyan. It's cool. It's a cool, weird. I mean, not respond to it, but I probably will. I might. I, I might test I might test it out when I talk to you and see how you feel like if yeah. you would like that. Okay. Yeah, go for I'm it. gonna ask you some questions. Uh the first four questions I ask every guest this season. 
the last question, I'm going to roll a 20 sided die. I'm going to show you the number and then I'm going to go to my spreadsheet and pick a question that you're going to answer and you won't know what it is. Nerd. I love it. <laughs> oh, yes, I am. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. What is one habit that you would like to pick up over the next year? Oh, making <laughs> recipes. Ooh. Just think like what is a daily thing that I can do to make my life better and I cook so much at home I don't really eat out that often and so just trying new recipes I get so into a rut and that is something I was oddly better at during the pandemic that I feel like I need to go back to. Nice. Uh, question two, would you rather know a lot? I'm sorry, would you rather know a little about a lot of things or a lot about one thing? Okay, see I'm with... Um, one of the, I can't remember the guy's name now, but I like to know, I am like a, I, mean, I know three or four areas really deeply, mm -hmm. but I don't like to know too much. I can't, if I go too far, it's not like meaningful enough. Like yeah. the, I want to know a couple areas really deeply. So I'm going to work that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, question number three, what do you need from the grocery store? Okay. Need or want? Want? Uh, more ice cream. I want some mm. ice cream sandwiches. Tillamook ice cream sandwiches. I don't know if y'all have ever had They're them. The They're the best. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, Tillamook is pretty much the only ice cream we buy. Is it? Okay. That actually makes me feel better. I'm not, I'm new to the Pacific Northwest and I keep gravitating mm. towards them. And it's like the chocolate chip mint one, the double, like mm -hmm. the peanut butter chocolate. I've never had one. Like peanut butter chocolate. Mm. Next level. Yeah. Yeah. Ruby Jewel too. If you have that up your way, Ruby Jewel. Ruby Jewel. I, yeah, and if you don't, we'll go to Ruby Jewel next time you're in town. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, question number four. Would you like to survive the zombie apocalypse? Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. Like I would be, yeah, I would, I would definitely make it a little bit. I think. I, I would definitely get killed like midway through. Like I, okay. I would totally, there'd be some, some level of survival would kick in and like, you know, pack everything in my mini Cooper and go. Um, but yeah, I think at a certain point I'd be like, you know what, this is just too much. Like I think it would be like some sort of meaningful way out. But yeah, no, yeah. I don't want to survive that fully. I don't think I'd be a good survivor. Of that. Excellent. All right. Question number five, I'm going to roll this die. It's gone behind my beverage. The question is number 19. Oh, number 19. Dog. It's yours. I don't know if you know that. It's, it's your fabulous parting gift. There is a, there's an what? envelope with your name on it that is going to be sent to you. I'm going to send it no. out tomorrow while I'm doing errands. Yeah. <laughs> As a really? guest. Yes, for real. This that is your, is so cool. this is your parting token. Yeah. All right. Question number 19. What do you collect? Okay, new collection. I mean, probably books, but okay, this is so freaking weird. Okay, so one of my favorite questions when I'm out on a beat where there's rocks is to ask someone to pick themselves up as a rock and then explain why that's their answer. Mm. And so I have me as a rock. Aww. This is me as a rock. Um, this is the person I'm dating as a rock. Oh. A wrong rock. And then this is my best friend, Steven. This is Hi, him Steven. as a rock. Yeah. Hi, Steven. And then this <laughs> is um, another like very close childhood friend as a rock. And you'll see some like similarities with like, uh -huh. you know, yeah. some yeah. darkness happening over here. Um, and then I have like a couple more people as a rock. And so it's very specific. It's not just like I collect rocks. It's like I want someone to intentionally pick out a rock that connects with their soul. And then I keep it. That's mm -hmm. nice. So that's, that's my weird collection. Like, just I like love it. What a fortuitous question to land on with you. I know. It's very funny. I hadn't really thought, but I do have like a collection of like six or seven things behind me or in front of me rather. 19. Lucky number 19. All right. Rick, you know the, you know the spiel. You're here. Wrap us up. Tie yeah, it off let's, hope, let's hope I stay here throughout my entire <laughs> monologue. We'll see if that works. Um, and again, like we have been looking forward to this, have tried to do this a few times, really happy it finally happened. Abundantly clear that 
it needs to happen time and time again. Unfortunately, mm-hmm. like we've developed a show with a format that doesn't <laughs> work for four hour conversations. <laughs> Who knew? But, but at some point, uh, we will continue the conversation. Um, your, you bring an inherent thoughtfulness and energy mm-hmm. to every question you're asked and you so just embody the response in such a meaningful and palpable way. I just want to thank you for bringing that part of yourself to this conversation. It's amazing to watch that in action. And I can absolutely understand why you wind up in probably multi day long, no sleep (laughs) conversations with people. It's very clear why that might occur. So we do appreciate you taking the time to swing by and share uh, at least a small sliver of that depth of conversation with us and the, the mildly interesting people audience. So thank you. Thank you. And thank you for having me and creating a a space where it feels safe to do that. I think it's a very, it's not always something that can come out for me. So I appreciate it. Cool. Yay. Everyone said really eloquent things. And then I was like, yay. Yay. (laughs) (laughs) And thank you. I'm so glad you were here. Uh, Other people. Be nice more interesting by yeah. by listening oh, to Anne. Yeah. It is. It was. It's nice that you showed up. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. And I hope that we can do this again next week. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, let's say goodbye. Should we sign off? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Goodbye. Good people. to see everyone. Thanks for coming. Thanks again, Anne. Go be interesting. Bye.